One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. So, so fun. Yes, we're on the so air. So and the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Fun. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pond! Greenwood Evergreen! Southside Blue Island Beverly, pay listen, all sub to You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Southside Pod! Old Plum Midlothian! Southside Pod! Old Fort Chicago Ridge, Flossmore and Bridgeview. You're listening to Southside Pod! Belly on up to the nine foot homemade oak bar and pour yourself a cold one. This is Southside Pod brought to you proudly by Family Waterproofing Solutions. You heard the ad at the beginning of the show. Take advantage of what they have on their website. The Express Service, if you know what you want, see the cost right there. Order and schedule online immediately for quick service. Nobody does that except for Family Waterproofing Solutions. That's why they've been named one of the Southland's best for the last several years. Your basement's best defense is at FamilyDry.com. The guys are on a hiatus this week. It's going to be a little bit of a different show, and then we're back to normal next week. So if you've missed an actual episode of Southside Pod, which is 30 minutes of good in a world of dumb covering the entire Southside, don't worry. They're all on demand. You can check them out, or you can listen to this football preview. I've been wanting to take a look at some of the area high school football teams, and Tim O'Brien from the Beverly Review is on this episode, and we're going to have an in-depth discussion about the big matchups. One of them's going on this week. Actually, there might be two of them this weekend. We're going to take a look at the season. We're going to ask what teams have state championship aspirations, and then which ones really have state championship aspirations. We're just doing that on this special high school football preview episode and then back to the normal 30 and then back to the normal 30 minutes of good that is Southside Pod next week. Before we get into that, just want to let you know our good friend John Streets has a couple of artisan markets coming up on the holiday weekend. Saturday, the 2nd of September, there's an artisan market at Imperial Oak Brewing in Willow Springs, 11 a.m. until 5 p.m., Food will include Pizza 750 and Arnold's Tacos, an assortment of handmade items, local artists, vintage sellers, and tarot reading. And then Sunday, Flipside Brewing Tinley Park is hosting another Beers, Burgers, and Bazaar. Handmade market shop over a dozen local makers and artists. Flipside Beers are going to be there, of course. They've got Smash Burgers, all ages welcome, free event, Parking lot is huge, really easy to get in there. The event is from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. on Sunday, 7144 183rd Street in Tinley Park. That helps you with your weekend plans. One of the great artisans that I've seen at that market is Sid Sauce that grows the peppers right here on the south side, makes the hot sauces, and then brings them to your door. Learn all about him at SidSauce.net. They present Tim O'Brien right now on Southside Pod. Joining me on the phone line right now from the Beverly Review, Tim O'Brien is on. How are you? I'm good, Chris. How's everything with you? I'm good, man. Uh, football season started here on the south side. We got a lot of teams playing a lot of football over the next couple of months. The Battle of Pulaski is happening this weekend, and and so many other teams that have hopes and dreams, and, and they're all telling me, like, well, our goal is to be 9-0. and Like, I talked to the head coach of Evergreen Park, and I was like, hey, it's your first season. What do you think? He goes, I want to go 9-0 and and win the state title. I'm like, okay. All right, that's a that's a goal to have. Everybody must have that at this point, right? My uh, my predecessor when I took the job, uh, he put the the sports section at the Beverly Review on the map. His name was Scott Fredericks, and he always told me kind of what to predict with, you know, what what are you looking for in the fall with football and volleyball? And he said every year we put our fall sports preview together. And he said, I leave every football practice convinced I've just talked to a state champion because everybody's <laughs> so geared up so man if we're healthy man if we can just hold on to the ball if we can just do this we're gonna go win state so yeah right now it's week one in the books everybody's kind of confident but yeah everybody you know it's this is a beauty opening day in baseball everybody's a contender until you're not so yeah let's see what we can do and you know 
doesn't have to be nine, you know, just get five and sneak into the playoffs. But everybody's real, uh, real positive, real hopeful right now. You know, early on in the high school football season, a lot of teams are playing non-conference games and a lot of them are going against lesser competition. Let's be honest. They'll sit there and say, okay, well, we just got to get warmed up. Not everybody does it, but there's a lot out there that are doing that, getting ready for their non-conference schedule. And then you got already this weekend, Labor Day weekend, the Battle of Pulaski, Rice Marist, and that's a slobber knocker a lot of years. What's it look like this year? It's kind of under the radar in terms of big names that might have been there in years past, but this is one of those matchups that it doesn't really matter if there's a ton of D1 talent or, oh, this kid's going to Big Ten school. This one's going to SEC. It doesn't really matter. It's it's fun this year because Brother Rice kind of took some lumps last year with a, a younger group, and by the end of the year, you could see the difference. Like they had taken those those necessary steps forward. Maris this year is Maris. They're gonna they're expected to be pretty good, but they do it without the kind of name recognition or reputation that they might have had. They lost basically their entire starting lineup on both sides of the ball. I believe they had four starters back. So while they have talent there, it's unproven. Nobody might know the names like previous seasons. So it's Brother Ice Maris though. They're coming off of two really interesting week one matchups where Brother Ice got by Maine South at Maine South, and Maris lost late against Glenbard West on the road. So, you know, as you talk about, yeah, okay, we'll schedule a win. Those are two programs that aren't really interested in just cupcakes. If they can find somebody on the schedule, they'll schedule you. So, yeah, maybe not the the glamour of recent years, but it's Brother Rice Maris early in the season. It's Labor Day. It's two teams with high aspirations for the season. So I'm looking forward to it. And I think it's going to be a good game because it, it always seems to be a good game. Name a sport for the, that rivalry. It ends up working out. So there was a big game last week in week one. I was in Crystal Lake at a fantasy football draft, and I had people asking me about what's going on with Carmel. Mount Carmel takes on East St. Louis, who was ranked one of the best teams in the nation and they win that game. Does that mean Mount Carmel is a shoe in to just win it all this year? Like what, what did you take from that game? With Mount Carmel, it's uh, there was a sense last year with those matchups because uh, Mount Carmel won seven, a and East St. Louis won six, a there was some just rumblings. No, nothing was ever going to come of it. Like, could we do a matchup of two state champs? Because everybody knew those were the two best teams in the state. Mount Carmel lost a lot of talent off that that state title team, especially on offense. Defensively, they returned three starters and backups who played. So there was still a sense of the guys waiting in the wings were more than capable and would have started on most teams. So, yeah, I mean, it was a legit win in every possible way. They did it on the road. East St. Louis lost people too, but it's still East St. Louis. Those new kids popped up and started. Jack Elliott at quarterback had a, a really strong year at backup last year when you look at his numbers. And now as a junior, he's taken over for Blaney Dowling at quarterback. So they've still got Darian Dupree. They've still got Lonzo Manning in the backfield. They've got receivers. They've got transfers coming in. They've got a line up front that has to prove themselves, but they're really good. Nothing's guaranteed. You never know what injury might pop up. What you know? Is there another team that could – run India in the playoffs and take you out. But yeah, I, I think even before that win, Mount Carmel was a legit state title contender, just maybe without a ton of name recognition going in. But yeah, watch out. The caravan are legit. They're going to be hopefully likely making a run in November. That's that's amazing to hear. Uh, so we've talked, we've mentioned Brother Rice, which I find really interesting because last year, I think, was the first year under a new head coach that it had success at his stop beforehand, but it was kind of like he had to get used to his team. And you you talk about Maris, looks like they've got a lot of new guys, and you talk about Carmel and, and where they're at right now, which looks like they're they're one of those odds-on favorites to go make a ton of noise and possibly win it all again. So after you take those teams and you, you kind of look at them, what other teams have we not talked about that you want people to pay attention to this year? One of the big storylines that I, I've just been following just over the last couple of years that, you know, uh, we cover 12 uh, 
high school football, we cover 14 schools, 12 football teams. Uh, and it's real top heavy, but the one that you kind of cover that's kind of grown up the last couple of years is Morgan Park. They've had freshmen starting, they've had sophomores starting, and then they come back. They're not transferring. They're staying relatively healthy. And last year they made the state quarterfinals for the first time since 2007. They ran into Nazareth and, uh, you know, eventually, uh, I believe the eventual state uh, class 5A state champ. And they brought, I think, 19 people back who started. And these aren't like, oh, we can, you know, hide them at linebacker. These are D1 kids. These are kids you're going to see at that next level starring in a couple of years on both sides of the ball. So Morgan Park is a team that uh, if you're a football fan, Kind of keep your tabs on them. See where they end up. Uh, the other big one locally is a uh, new coach, uh, some new systems, a little bit of everything new after uh, Todd Kuska stepped down last year at St. Rita. Uh, Martin Hopkins, a uh, local guy from Morgan Park, uh, he co- he played and coached at Iowa for a long time. He's uh, he's in his first year with the, his alma mater and it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of develop because they got bumped up from the CCL ESCC green to the top division, to the blue. So the schedule is no joke. Uh, you know, they're going to get tested. Who's going to step up? A lot of questions, but the talent's there. So those are the big ones, uh, you know, that we didn't discuss. But then you look around and there's a lot more teams kind of waiting in the wings. Like, okay, can we – get into the playoffs can we get back into the playoffs like all this stuff you know that it, it's going to be an interesting fall to see how things kind of develop because there aren't any teams that you look around and it's just like oh it's not going to happen this year for them i i wouldn't be surprised if we, we get 10 or 10 or 11 teams into the state playoffs locally in our area i find it interesting that you were mentioning a an up-and-coming public school team but then mentioning that it's surprising or at least you're 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 noting that the freshmen and sophomores didn't transfer after they played, had experience, and showed their skill. Is that a thing that is is still prevalent? Are, are players getting poached if they go at a young age, early on, freshman, sophomore, play really well, and now all of a sudden you see them in a bigger program? Is that something you notice? It's happened more in recent years with basketball, especially boys' basketball. Um, St. Rita had a class that came in in that COVID year and it was basically all freshmen. And that first year they lost a couple, then it was more. And then this summer, everybody left. Uh, You're seeing it a lot more with basketball, just kids leaving. I wouldn't call it poaching because most of the times when I've called coaches about it, they say the coaches have nothing to do with it. And you got to take them at face value at a certain point. It's more, Hey, I went to grammar school with this kid. Why don't you transfer? you get to play with us. Like we got state title aspirations like you. And then, you know, it depends. Do the parents move? Is it out of district? All this stuff that pops up with transfer rules. So you never really know, but with football, you're starting to see it more a little bit that, uh, you know, a a kid doesn't get along with a coach. He's not playing as much as he wants. He thinks he's better than he is, or, you know, there's a thousand different circumstances, but you're just starting to see that pop up more where, Kids that grow up with a program don't necessarily stay at that program if a, quote, better opportunity comes up. It's crazy, too, because when you go to one of these these games, and, and I suggest that everybody at least find one or two of them that they go to this fall, it doesn't matter what school you go to, it's funny to watch the little kids and they're all running around in the high school where they all have the hoodies on, they all have the shirts on, they're handing them out, they're recruiting third graders, for a lot of these schools, I mean, you know, I mean, like I, I notice it when I go and I watch it like my my daughter plays in the Brother Ice Mother Macaulay marching band and I'll be there at homecoming because they have the former members of the band get to come back and play. And I was in that band 30 years ago and I get to go stand there and embarrass my daughter and play my saxophone. You know, and I, I only bring it out once a year just so I can go and play with her in the stands because I think it's fun. And I remember the fight song and it's a, it's a blast. But I notice now as I'm older, the amount of little kids that are running around in rice gear. You know, the amount of shirts that are handed out that are their size, like it's almost like when they have a camp, it's like, hey, we have thought about high school yet. And they're they're 10. So, I mean, like you you think about it, all that happens up until the point where they join a school 
and yet there's still a couple of years in there where they might actually pick another one. That's kind of crazy to me. It's always fun, and it's the difference. I graduated from high school in 2003. The, just the difference you see from when I started writing in 2007 when I graduated from college to the mid-2010s to now. Like, if you if you go back, I, I'm, I'm blanking on the year for this, but uh, Frank Lenti at Mount Carmel, you know, legendary football coach, won a, a million state titles, crazy win percentage, you know, one of the best to ever do it he got suspended for recruiting. Like there was paperwork, like he was sending stuff out to kids and, you know, uh, he, he missed it. I want to say multiple games and this was early 2010s. And now it's just kind of blatant. Like everybody's recruiting, everybody's feeling the pinch for enrollment. They got to get kids in the building. They got to get the athletes and the academic kids in the building too not ripping anybody it's this is you know this is where things are so yeah everybody you know you see pizza parties you see uh okay we're hosting games at our field and yeah like you said you look at the stands there's a big crowd but then you look at the end zones and there's four or five hundred grammar school kids running around throwing footballs you know playing catch just hanging out so yeah it's crazy everybody everybody needs the kids in the building so You know, this is where we're at sometimes. You got to, you know, start them early, for lack of a better description. (laughs) Start them early and then get ready for for big time football here in the fall. Before I let you go, is there something that we haven't mentioned in terms? I know we mentioned uh, the Battle of Pulaski happening here on Friday night. And it's a, such a big deal. Like my kids at Rice right now, and I've been getting emails all week with restrictions on tickets. Even with all that going on beyond that game, is there a game circled right now on the schedule that a Tim O'Brien is going to be at? Mount Carmel San Rita comes up, uh, I believe it's week four. So do the math on that. That's what second week of September, third week of September coming up here. Um, the other just it's it's this weekend. So it's, uh, you know, if you can't get a ticket to Brother Ice Maris, but you want to see some really high level football. I wish it was any other week. Uh, Morgan Park's playing at Mount Carmel. Uh, this is as cool a matchup as it gets just publicly one of the public leagues best versus the defending state champ in 7a and they won the blue last year in Mount Carmel so uh, it's going to be a test I think Mount Carmel wins out just because they're they're so talented they're so disciplined but Morgan Park has the potential to to make that game interesting they've got the athletes they've got an offense that can put some points up and a defense that can you know fly around the field and make some plays so uh, you know, I wish the schedule cooperated more. I wish I could, uh, you know, bounce back and forth somehow. Uh, Which one are you picking? You going to Morgan Park, Mount Carmel? I'll be at Brother Ice Maris. That's, uh, You're going to the one that's like the heritage matchup. You got to be at that one. Right. That's a fastball down the middle. If uh, if I don't go there, you know, that's the sort of thing that as an area newspaper, we know there are certain matchups you don't miss. And that's right at the top of the list, especially in football. Uh, you know, Mayor's schedule isn't easy going forward. This becomes a, a really big game for them. You know, potentially they got to get that one. So, uh, yeah, it's Brother Ice Maris. Uh, any other game, any other week, probably, I'd be at Morgan Park, Mount Carmel. But uh, got to stick with the, as you said, Battle of Pulaski and see who wins out. Okay. Now, remember, if Morgan Park beats Mount Carmel, re listen to this interview because I heard Tim O'Brien rave about Morgan Park earlier on and then talk about how talented Mount Carmel was. And I know he's going to be checking his phone constantly during that matchup. That one sounds so intriguing to me. If you can't get a ticket to Brother Rice Maris, that might be the one you want to pay attention to uh, this weekend. Tim, I appreciate you every time you come on. Check out the Beverly Review. They got uh, all kinds of great news in there covering the entire spectrum of the South Side. But Tim is killing it for the sports section, covering everything, not just football. And I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, for sure. Looking forward to it. I appreciate you having me on as always, Chris. It's the South Side! Y'all come back now here. Joining me on the phone line right now for a look at what is going on in the South Side football scene, all the different things. I'm going to start that over. That shows that I just ran in from picking up my kids. I'm an idiot. (laughs) No worries. (laughs) 